The question was uh, about midterm, uh, about, uh, first of all, anything due date this week. The answer is whatever you had it before. Okay. So if you have some workshop five due at certain time, that's the due date that you have. Nothing new is going to be released today because you have midterm, and that should be your focus. And I will release the project at the end of the week, so probably Friday. Um, uh, Thursday, Friday, uh, the, the uh, project is going to come up, which the first milestone is going to be due a week after the study break, and it's going to keep going like that, something like that. And you have, again, as I mentioned, four milestones that you're going to, that's going to have a loose due date, and one milestone at the end that's going to have a firm due date. <coughs> first, I don't know, I have to take a look at the code. I haven't said it yet. No, it's af a week after the city. Yes. Yeah, so the so the first the first uh, uh, milestone of the project is going to be something that you already know. It's all of all the stuff over here, and the rest are the things that are going to be taught to you as you're going through the subject. <clears throat> okay. Uh, so today is going to be review, and we are as as you know all the. Uh, Everything that we have uh, on, on the test will be from week one to five, which means classes with resources are not going to be in there. Okay? So input output operator overloads, if I, because in, it's, in, it's in week six, I'm not going to put it over there, but it, would have, it, it was a bonus if you had it because it's so easy. Uh, you could easily get marks out of it. But... <clears throat> um, yeah, but I, it, it, um, I think I'm going to bring it in because it, it has it has not because it's operator overload. You already know it. It's the th remember anything I take out now, it's going to fall back on you on final thing. So, okay. <laughs> You will have uh, one to five in final. Whatever you see in there, it's going to come in final. Uh, sorry, in, in midterm, in final, they're going to be used but not focused on. Okay, so in final, you may have a concept question. 5% of the whole concept, 5 10% could be from the first part. But we have so many things to cover that we do. Yes. Uh, it, it's probably multiple choice and fit in the blank, but um, I'm. Th uh, no. Yeah, I was thinking. I was thinking to put everything for you as essay stuff to write. To explain, like I'm gonna. Ex But specific board, if you don't remember, then you're not going to get the mark anyway. <laughs> Anyways, we'll see. Uh, I have to see what, what, what I, I have to take a look at it again and see if it's good or not. But so there's no promises. You will get it by, by, by tomorrow night, everything. So it's going to be, you're going to see exactly what the format's going to be. No. <laughs> Thank you. I really appreciate it. So, yeah. but anyway, so, 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 um, yeah, so that's that. And, uh, um, yeah, um, I'm all yours. Uh, there's, uh, if you want uh, talking about anything, let me know and I'll talk about it. I'll give you examples, any part, anything that you want to know. So we'll start with my friend over there, the whisperer. Go ahead. <laughs> No, no, no. This is this is topic stuff. Like any topic that you want me to review, not that workshops. This is something that you need for midterm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh huh. Yes, 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 yes. 
Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Why, why you're saying there's saying more than one? Because, okay, the, the question was, the question was when I was, when I was supposed to overload, I don't know which operator it was, Boolean operator, I, he, uh, my friend was saying over here when, com when uh, doing conversion operator overload, I forgot to make it a const. And the error message is that more than one conversion type is available, yada, yada, so it didn't do it. The reason is that, oh, remember, when compiler is stuck, it tries to convert your uh, class to something to be able to make things work. It's always like that. When you set an integer to a double, how does it work? It should give you an error. It doesn't. It converts the double to an integer and does it for you anyways, right? And the exact same thing happens for classes. When you, to see why that error is being given, comment your conversion operator and walk through it. Let the compiler walk through it. You will see that it's converting it to something based on the things that you have. Like uh, if, for example, if you are um, overloading your uh, class for a Boolean, and you don't do it, but you have an integer overload, compiler is going to use that instead. Okay? So compiler, if you have an integer overload, and you use your object in an if statement, if you don't have a Boolean conversion, compiler is going to use that because it can extract the value and then have that value, or even if you have a, a double conversion, anything like that because it sees it can convert it to a value that is castable to Boolean, okay? And it's not an exact match, but it says it's okay. I'll do it anyway to get the thing. When you create a Boolean conversion and doesn't make it, don't make it constant, they both become an unmatched, exact match to do. Therefore, the compiler says, I have two choices to do. None of them are exact match to what you're asking. And I don't know which one to pick. But when you make one constant, compiler picks the secure one. So that becomes the choice. Therefore, you don't get a warning out of it. So if compiler finds three ways equally not exact, it gives you an error. But when it finds three ways, and one of them is the exact one, it picks up the exact one. And that's why you get a, a, an error over there. Did I explain properly? Hopefully, yeah. So always, so, <sighs> I'm just trying to come up with, say, I want to give you a good answer for, yeah, that was it. I don't want to confuse you, so I'm not going to. I wanted to give you another example, but that's going to be confusing. Anyways, another question. Go ahead. Okay, let me do something now. Because this is actually recording their conversation instead of you. Those two beside microphone, they are going, and it's some, some, far, some foreign language, and, and what people are listening, hearing over there, like two people are saying something that nobody understands. Uh. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Okay, uh, one more question. Um, so, another um, test in the workshop, mm -hmm. you gave us a CPP file, mm -hmm. but the header file was pretty much empty. Okay. So I was guessing you wanted us to. Is know the C, does the CPP file have something in it? Yeah, it does. So my question is, how do you know what to put? I get that um, everything should be private unless it is necessary for it to be public. Mm -hmm. The operators and all those stuff should be public. But what I did was, uh, since the majority of those uh, stuffs in the CPP file are calling the empty portfolio that's the one that sets everything to a new mm -hmm. state mm -hmm. i kind of made only that private okay and uh, the this portfolio parts which i didn't see a need to make the this portfolio a private but i just made it anyway but the only one i saw necessary was the empty portfolio part the one that sets everything to a new yeah, state. Yeah, yeah. am i right or yeah so more? so the rule for it is this let's put it this way 
when you are not an analyst yet, which means you cannot foresee what's going to happen five years from now. These are workshops. It doesn't matter. As long as it compiles and you submit it, right? But in real life, when you cannot decide at the moment, what am I going to do? Should I make it public or private? What's going to happen three years from now when somebody's using my object? When you cannot foresee that long, number one, you talk to your system analyst to see what the person says. Number two, uh, or team lead, whoever's leading the coding, or you make it private. If it works as it's private, private is preferred. Oh, it's always like that. It's just exactly like real life. Can I go out without pants on? Yes. Don't do it. Right? <laughs> Default is to, you know, keep everything private, and then unless I'm going to the beach, then you can actually go without your pants and jump in the water. But the, but the in a bathing suit, hopefully. <laughs> yes. But the operators won't work when private, right? Will they work? It all depends. I see. There is no exact question. You, the answer is in our situation, yes. But if you say you have a fully private class that is owned by another class, then all the private stuff is going to be working for that class, but for no one else. There is no exact answer for it. I cannot say yes. Like, this is one of the biggest mistakes that some of the colleagues do that they say, for example, attributes are private and methods are public. That's not the case. Sometimes we have public private methods, sometimes, sometimes we have, like, if you have an attribute that there is, there is no need for any type of validation and there is no need to uh, filter how it's being set or get, then make it public. Who cares? Why, you are, have, why do you have to make it private? Right? So again, you have to look at the circumstances. And anything can be private, anything can, can be public based on design. I cannot, you, there is no golden rule about it. <clears throat> but again, if you don't know what, always make it private and see if it works. You have more questions, don't you? No, no, in a test. Okay, let me just tell you something about the test, okay? In the test, I do not want exact answers. In a test, I want to see if you understand the concept. That's all I need. Don't think that you're going to give me some golden, beautiful thing to get full mark. I'm not one of those people who says, like, A plus is for God. I'm not going to do that, OK? Yeah, so lots of people, many profs had that thing. Like, I, I'm not going to do that. Yeah, yeah, so they do that. Like, oh, nobody gets A plus. No, no, everybody can get A plus in my subject if you understand what the thing is doing, right? So <clears throat> um, just. Uh, demonstrate that you understand what the topic wants and um, uh, what the question wants, and you're fine. So, in, like, if, if I am not looking at, at encapsulation and I'm asking you a question about how to implement uh, uh, an operator overload, it being public or private doesn't really matter. I'm looking to see if you can overload or not. Yeah, sir. Yeah. Uh, I, I wonder why... Why need a uh, helper function? Isn't it possible we do op operator world alone? Why do we have uh, functions yeah, and yeah. Just, just have operators? Why, why we need helper function? Oh, we just to, we just. The to, thing is that okay, you, yeah. that's a beautiful question. Yeah. Why do we need helper functions? Why do why do do we even? The answer is that we don't. Helper functions. That's why they call it helper. When you're stuck and there is no way around it, that's when we need helper. That's number one. So creating helper functions to just do something because we are lazy, that's bad. So you always create methods. Everything must be encapsulated. Everything must be object-oriented unless you see no way around it. Now, why do we need helper functions? There are two possibilities for that. Number one. When um, uh, are we, uh, helper functions, help, for helper functions, I would say only one. For helper functions, the only reason you need a helper function is that one of the classes, you don't have access to a source code. Yeah, you don't have access. You cannot change. You, you want an operation happen, to happen between two objects, and you don't have access to its code. Yes. 
Therefore, you create a helper between the two to do something with them. So I have object A, I have object B, and I, have, I do not have access to its, uh, to its uh, code. And I want something to happen between these two. So you create a helper function. But for an operator to be helper, that's one of the conditions. Number two for operator helper functions is that when you have the left operand, a primitive type. When the left operand is a primitive type, it cannot accept a member function. So, what means primitive type? Oh, I'll, t I'll tell you. Uh, so, yeah, yeah. so, oh, there, I have a class already over here. <clears throat> this label thingy. Okay, you see, I have a label over here, right? Let's say. And I'm not going to develop this thing. Do you remember? Uh, let me just give you something simpler, because labor has lots of stuff in it. Eh? I'm just going to give you something very simple. It's uh, the standard thing to go through it. So let's remove all these things. These are from the last session. I just wanted to. So let's say I have a class container. I always give this example, and it has integer M data in it, and you are holding some data in a container, okay? Public, and let's say you want to do this. You want to have integer A and B, and you want to see B is, and you have container C, and you want to say B is A plus C, and you want the result of this, the outcome of this, to be the value of int plus, plus the M data. Yeah. How can you make this plus A's member function? You can't, because it's a primitive type. An operator, by default, has the left argument, left operand, the owner. If I wanted to have this, if I wanted to have this, the answer is int operator int operator plus uh, int value and const, right? Yeah. That's, yeah. The, uh, that's the thing for it. Because at left side, I have C. Yeah. Assuming that I want to have B to be a container, uh, to be a, an integer, not a container. Yeah. If I want both of these to work, if I want both of these to work, which means I have you're just asking the questions that I'm going to give you in a test. If I have both of them done, so I want both of these to be possible. If I want both of these to be possible, so this one <clears throat> in here, I'm going to return container. Right? So. This one will satisfy the first one, but how about the second one? How can I make the second one work? How do we do it? That's when I'm going to say, so first, I'll overload this one to give me the container. Second, I'm going to, because the result of this operator at line 14 or 15, the result of the right-hand side of the assignment operator will be a container, right? Yeah. To make that container convertible to an integer, what do I do? I create an operator. Uh, yeah. OK? Yeah. So we, sometimes students forget that this is an operator itself. An assignment operator like other, unlike other operators like plus, they can never be member. It doesn't, they can never be helper. You can never have a helper assignment operator. One of the questions for the test, can I overload uh, an, an assignment operator as a helper function? You can't. Assignment operators are the only operators that you cannot make it a helper. It has to always be a member, okay? Because of this, you have no choice in here other than a type conversion. You cannot create a helper function over there and a size assignment that it receives an int at left and a thing at right. It doesn't work out. 
Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. And as you see, I'm not implementing I'm just, these are how the questions are going to be. I'm going to give you a class like that with nothing in it. And I'm going to say, give me the prototype to make this possible. And I want those two answers. That means you understand operators. So that's how the questions are going to be. Or I'm just going to give you this question. I'm going to say, this is the class. Write that operator for me. And I want to see if you can do it, like implement that. Or don't write anything, and I'm going to say, make this possible. OK? All right. Uh, thank you. Please pass the microphone to the person. Uh, are you going to be specific if we need to return a reference? Like, uh, reference of what? Of the, of the class. Like of the, the int? Yeah. You no, can. The container. Oh, the reference of a container. Oh, how do I know if I'm returning a reference or not? Reference. How, so the question is, when do I know if I'm supposed to return a reference or not? Yes. OK, first of all, if like private and public, reference is always preferred because it saves time. If possible, return a reference. Okay. That's number one. Number two, if you are worried, you can always return a Nah, you don't even need that It's it, because it's a class. I want to say return a constant reference, but nah, you don't want it to be. So what happens over here, if I, what happens if I return a, a value? What happens over here? OK, now we're going to do this. So um, I'm going to actually implement this. So container. That means, compiler, write the default constructor for me, even if I am the, the, the doing other constructors. You, if you implement one constructor, you are responsible for all of it. That's the rule. So if you don't write anything, compiler will create a default constructor for you. We all remember that, right? So in here, I'm saying I am initializing M data to 0, so I do not need to implement the default constructor. So I'll do it like that. But so that's if I don't want to, OK? If I want the compiler to create the default anyway, OK? Well, because I'm showing him, I want to show a message that I'm going to actually do it. So container in here, I'm going to say C out defaulting. And obviously, I'm going to have using namespace std, OK? Then I'm going to have container. And I'm going to create the copy constructor. Or let's go with the regular constructor, so integer uh, value. Now, yeah, that's that. Now I'm going to say value, m value. m data is set to value. OK? And then I'm going to create that. And in here, I'm going to say C out, copying. And I'm going to go container, container, reference C. That's the copy constructor. So what is, uh, so another question for the test. What is wrong with this copy constructor? What is wrong with the definition of this copy constructor? Oh, so that's not copying. That's setting. My apologies. Mm, creating. This is copying. Nobody said anything. Everybody like accepts any garbage that I write over here, really. So what is wrong with this copy constructor? Hmm? Oh, make this one constant. Yes. Copy constructor must accept because its job is to copy, not to set. So that has to be const, 
Okay? And then I have the destructor. Uh, okay, so that's it's being killed over there. So now let's actually write this and see what happens. So in here, I'm going to actually write... Uh, I'm going to actually write the, 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 the operator. So I'm going to write m data uh, plus equal. Oh, no, no, I can't do that because, because it's a constant. I'm not supposed to change anything over there, right? So in here, I'm going to say container. Uh, uh, mm, container reference, container uh, temp. And I'm going to say over here m value, uh, m, dat, uh, m data plus value. Okay? Yeah, because that's plus is what's supposed to do. And I'm going to say return uh, temp, right? So. The question, the question that you ask, if we are returning reference or not, you pinpointed what was, what was my mistake, that I'm returning actually something over here by reference. The mistake I made over here was that because I am returning a local variable, returning reference is not right. Okay? So that reference has to be re removed. If I, if I had, but as you see, by default, I always do it. So in here, if, if this was what I wanted to create, then there should be no, ref, no it, that should be reference. Because the, I am literally changing the value of the current object and return it. So... In here, this is being returned. So if I have, if I have something like this, and okay, so in this case, in this case, what is being returned? A temporary thing, right? And the scope is within line 23 and 25, correct? Yes. So if I return the reference, temp is going to die. I'm returning the name of something that is supposed to be de de dying? That's not right, correct? But when I'm here, I am returning this. In this main, this is B, and B exists in main. Therefore, Returning the name of B is valid in main because B is not dead afterwards. B exists. Therefore, in here, if I am putting plus equal, that is supposed to be a reference and the other one is not. So to show my mistake, that's the thing. Um, and thank you for pinpointing it. Okay? For the in thingy, you know, this is just... return. If I can type it, it would be nice. Return. All right. Next. Next question. Can we go through the IO stream and the stuff? Oh, you want to overload the IO stream here? Like just to... Yeah, so for it, for sure. if I want the container to show something in here, the good thing is that I don't need to even have a print statement in here done. I don't need to do a print to overload the I/O stream without uh, uh, with uh, so so if I want to do an O stream over here, I need to do O stream reference operator. At left side, I have a constant uh, container, right? Oh, sorry. At left side, I have an O stream reference, OSTR, and at right side, I have a constant container reference. Right hand operator. Yeah. 
Did I misspell it? Yeah. Okay. The reason I don't need to do the print because I have something that accesses M data. Right? And it's a constant one. So in here I can say OSDR uh, int uh, RO and return it. So if I ask you to overload this, you didn't need to do any print over there because I have something to access the data. I, can, I just want to print it, right? But if I told you I want iStream to be overloaded for this, which means reading it from the screen, then I have to have some kind of a setter over there, setter or modifier class. And that setter, either I have to be able to change it, the value, have a setter for it, or I need to, either I need to have a setter to return something. We understand, right? Or uh, I need to write a read function in there. So I'll go with read to make sure that we remember how it works. So in here, I'm going to say iStream reference read, iStream reference ISDR, that by default is C in. And in here, I'm going to go uh, return ISDR in M data. This is just textbook thing. I don't even think about it. And I'll go as iStream reference operator, iStream reference ISDR. And at right side, it's not going to be constant anymore because it's being changed. So I'm going to say return. ROs read passing ISDR to it and done. Does that answer the question? Hopefully. Sorry about hugging the mic. No, um, no. Why is it that, for example, if I do a bool um, conversion, um, like um, if I overload the bool. Bool conversion. So why is uh, it I don't specify bool? Like, why is it that the, the compiler is not helping me? like um, cast the int. Why do I have to specify the int? Why is it doing it? Why is it not doing it for me automatically? But for oh, it can do automatically. If I do it, it's gonna do it's gonna do it for you. Okay. Compiler's gonna do it automatically now. Because it says you are printing R on O stream. Let me see how I can do it. It goes through everything and the only thing that it finds out is the integer conversion of that that works with C out. So it works. But never leave anything to default. Because tomorrow you're going to go over there, overload a double one. And then which one comp compiler is going to pick? To, to give an ambig it becomes ambiguous, right? So always, be if you want the integer to get printed, cast it yourself to make sure the compiler knows which one to pick. Therefore, you're not going to have any confusion happening. OK? So. And if I, let's actually look at this. So if I go operator, bool, const, like that, and I'm going to say return m data not being equal to zero, for example. I want to check to see if the, 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 the thing is on or not, OK? Um, I think that compiler is actually choosing that one. But what if I want to show if it's, fi if it's filled or not when I'm printing it? OK, let's actually see which one is going to pick. I'm, I'm curious now. Um, all these things are happening, so I'm going to just say C out D. Something like that, right? Recursive on Alt? What? What did it tell me? One more time. I don't know show his memory. Oh.
and these are initialized why a is still oh it's still giving from last one okay why it says uninitialized memory it is 20 line I don't know, sometimes the error message, <laughs> this, there is nothing over here. So it comes over here, all these things are done. When it comes in here, I want to see which one is going to get picked. I don't know even which one it picked. Huh. What did they do wrong? Oh, my goodness. Beautiful error happened over here. Okay, what's happening here? <laughs> I just noticed something, what I did. If I, if I actually let it run, it's going to crash my computer. Think about it for a second. Let's walk through this. Beautiful error happened. I want everybody to pay attention. Okay. <clears throat> you are saying, so... When the compiler is running this, what is happening? It says, I have a container at left, right, and a C out at left, right? This is O stream, this is container. What is being called? The operator is being called, right? It comes in here, then it comes over here. I have what at left? What at right? Container. What is being called? The function again. What is being called? The function again. What is being called? The function again. It's, it's a recursive endless loop, and it's going to overflow your stack, and it's going to crash. So you see what I was just said? Because I've never done this, I never leave anything for default, as I mentioned. This problem never happened to me. It just happened to me as I was giving you an example. I love this moment when something happens and I see. So, this is, so now if I actually had the integer thingy in here, this would never have happened. Now I have an integer at right and C out at left. Works perfectly. Okay, so now if I actually run it, it comes over here, goes to there, picks up the integer, and just prints it, and we're done. Okay, I hope you got the message. Yes, <laughs> All right, be careful. Are you, are, are you bringing the microphone? Oh, somebody has a question? Oh, no, yeah, yeah, no, no, no. You can, the, today is just, I'm just answering questions. Whoever has a question, okay, give it to me. Question, anyone? I have a question regarding this note. Like okay, let me show it to people. Okay. <laughs> like, why here is like... Okay, show me. Sh 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 current, tell. current object. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, we are talking about the current object. Yeah. Okay. And, and go down. Keep going down. Yeah, here. Why there is like, why the structure is called four times? Why the structure is called four times? Let me walk through. So I am creating... Oh, <clears throat> display is returning itself by value. Mm -hmm. That's a big mistake. Why? Okay, let me explain. Let's come back over here. I'm going to remove this. Passing, not reference, just a regular thing, right? Are we okay with that? So now, in my tester in here, let me first save this. Let me first save this as is. Uh, uh, operator overloading and type conversion. Pardon me? Eh, it doesn't matter. You know it's operator overloading. Operator over 
it's not okay. All right, let's let's bring that thing back and just give you an example like this. So container C twenty uh, and D and then I'm gonna have integer A. Is it integer A? No, let's go with, uh, let's do a copy assignment too, okay? I'm gonna do a copy assignment too. So, uh, I'm gonna bring this up just because I want it to be beside the copy assignment when I'm doing the explanation. So if I want to do a copy assignment, it is container, reference operator set and in here I'm going to say const container reference C uh, right hand operator right and the const is supposed to be lowercase so um, essentially I'm setting m data to ROs dot m data right and I'm returning this are we good are we okay so now this is what I'm going to do. Another beautiful question for the, for the, what should we call it? Uh, for the midterm. Okay, so now in here I'm going to say D is set to C plus equal A. And in here I'm going to have, that was, that was an A, right? Yeah. So in here I'm going to put integer A that has 30. Okay, and C out. And C out. Are we good with this? Very simple thing, right? And I have everything set up over there, and life is beautiful. I run the program, and this is what happens. I'm creating, defaulting, creating is for the C. The faulting is for the D. Creating is for the C, right? Mm. The faulting is for the D. Mm. The two operations happened, right? So C B plus equal that one, 20 and 30, that's 50. Mm. And it puts the 50 in D, prints them both, and life is beautiful. Mm -hmm. Are we okay? Answering your questions too, my friend. Okay? So, now this is what I'm going to do. Right? I didn't do anything. I just didn't return by reference. I just didn't return by reference. And look. What the? Why so many things are coming and going? And now we're going to walk through it. Okay. <laughs> and now we're going to walk through it. So, 54, default uh, C is created, right? Yes. And let's actually do something. Let me, just to uh, have it better shown, I'm going to say over here, creating. And in here, I'm going to put... Uh, M data. I just want it to show what is being created, so that kind of helps. And in here, I'm going to say copying M data. Not no 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 copying. Uh, yeah, M data. M that uh, copying. C dot M data over M data. And put it before the assignment so we know what's going on. Okay? So it's going to copy the M data of that one over the M data of the current object. Are we okay with this? That's a little cruel. Removing. M data. And by the way, 
I, C++, I self-taught. When I was learning C++, it wasn't being taught in university. That old I am, you know? So, so this is how I learned it. Anything that you don't understand how it happens, start doing that. So the execution walks through for you. Then you look, go, go through it. You are practicing in five different ways. First of all, you are writing code. Secondly, you are walkthroughing. Third, you are teaching yourself something. So it's amazing. Okay, do it this way, and you're going to be uh, doing things perfectly. Okay. And now, in here, I am going the exact same thing, but it's not copying. It's actually assigning, right? Assigning, assigning uh, m data to r o dot m data. I the other way around. No, it's assigning the data of the current object to the data that is coming in. Why is the other way around? Okay. Okay, no? see, the right-hand operator is at right yeah. and left. So I'm saying assigning, because I have A is set to B, the content of so A... It's the same from left to right, right? Yeah, that's, that's how English works. Assign A to B, it means take the value of B, put it on A. Yes. And that's why I'm saying assigning the current value to the value of the right hand. Okay, but the other one, English, but the, <laughs> English <problem. laughs> Okay, so, sure, <laughs> with, a, with three questions mark after. <laughs> so, uh, that's copying M data over the thing, so that's how English works, right? Adding stuff, I don't think we need to do anything. Adding stuff is adding, right? So, uh, or uh, uh, let's do, do it like that. Now you're going to get confused again. Adding adding uh, value to M data. Right? Adding value to M data. That's correct. I am doing that, right? I'm adding value to M data. All right? Uh, and these are the things we tested in here, right? So running this, it's going to give you 50,000 different things, but let it, let it have it so we actually see what happens. Okay, so, so let's walk through. <clears throat> First off, C is created, so they're creating 20, and D is getting defaulted, correct? Yes. Then I'm adding, so first the right side is, being hap uh, is, is happening, right? Adding 30 to 20. That's beautiful. It comes in here. It comes in here. Where is it? It adds. No, the other one. Oh. Oh, yeah. It's, it adds the value to that one, so this is fine. So that's adding 30 to 20, right? Yeah. Now it returns the current object by value. Yeah. What does it mean? It means... I always give, give you the example, not that one. I give you an example of a... If we are playing a game and I have a coffee cup over here and I want to get the coffee to you, but I'm not allowed to pass this line. This coffee cup is not allowed to pass in this, this line. Why? Because when it passes its line, it's going to die. It's by value, it's not by reference. So if I do that, the only way I can pass this coffee to you is, is uh, getting another coffee cup, put it in there, give that one to you. Mm -hmm. Then you get that one, pour it in your own coffee, and throw it away. Mm -hmm. So I have to have a medium between the two. Otherwise, I cannot pass something from one scope to another by value. So what does it do? At this moment, it's going to copy, 
create a temporary nameless object at this line, copy the content of 50 that is just found out in it, mm -hmm. and return the copy out instead. Okay. Remember, anything passed by value must be copied. Okay? Mm. Yes. Okay? So therefore, because it's passed by, passed by value, that temporary nameless is returned. Therefore, the result of this operation over here is a temporary nameless object created that is a copy of C and returned. Then that copy will be passed to the assignment operator. But compiler never copies a copy. If you give it a copy, it just uses the copy. It says, this is already a copy. Okay? If I'm just going to use this. I'm not going to copy it again. Co copy of a copy doesn't make sense. Or, let's put it this way, a temporary nameless object never gets copied. That temporary nameless object is passed in here and is called RO. Okay. So RO is a temporary nameless object coming in, which is that one. But sadly, this one is returning that temporary, re returning the current object that is C, that is D again. So D is now being returned out by value to no one. So nobody's even catching it. So if I'm over here, the result of the temporary name that's being assigned to D, D is returning a copy. And nobody's catching it even. It goes into cyberspace. It's as if I'm pouring a poof, throwing it away, doing nothing with it. And that copy happens again. Then the line ends. Because the line ends, temporary nameless objects are not needed anymore. So Do throw them away. So these two removes are the two. The temporary one removes D? There is, nothing is removing D. Two temporary nameless objects got created oh, so because I, I returned two objects by value. Okay. Now they are both removed. So I come over here to do this stupid line of mine because I didn't return it by reference. Two temporary nameless objects got created for no reason. And those two must die at 58.5 because this line is the scope of those temporary nameless objects. And when their scope is over, compiler removes them. Okay. So two removes happens. And then the two 50s D and C are printed. And at the end, D and C die. Always return by reference unless you can't. Okay. Yes. So this, okay. so this is not really actually the right way to do it. No, this is the wrong way to do it, but it's, tel but it's telling you if it's wrong, we don't do it. That's, why it's, that's what's going on. It's, it, it, is, it is something you shouldn't do. Okay. But sometimes you have to. You sometimes you have to. Okay. And that's why you ask questions. That's why we have, if that would explain perfectly, we didn't need the class. You would have just read that and go do the test. Okay, so, madam, madam. Line, give me line number. 23 to 27. Yes. I'm sorry, uh, you're about to ask a good question, so uh, other people may want to hear you too. Go ahead. Okay, I want us to talk about line 26. Uh huh. Okay, you said we, um, at that point we are returning the current object, we are returning the value, and we should always return by reference if we want to use it, right? No, no. If we, w we, if we want, we should always return by reference if we can. Because returning or passing, let's call it like that, passing or returning, it doesn't make any difference. Even if you have an argument in a function, passing or returning should always be by reference if possible. Okay, so Professor, because from the last quiz, what I understood from the... Um, results we got was 
this like when you have asterisk this mm -hmm. you are referring to the current object perfect and it is also a reference to the current object i'll answer your question in three seconds how do i do it what is a what do you call a it's a variable of what type of integer right so can i say a is a reference of an integer object? Of course I can. That's the whole thing. The name of, an, of, a, of a variable is its reference. OK, so another question. Be with, stay with me. What is P? address address of a okay what is what is p ah if i can type it what is p what do we say my lady like remember i told you when it's there, there is an asterisk if it comes before i thought we say we say target of right so it is target of p correct or we can call it reference of A. Anything that carries the name of an object is its reference. Going back to here, this is the address of the current object. Target of this is the current object, is its reference. If I return it by reference, I have a reference at the other side. If I return it by value, the reference cannot be sent anymore. Therefore, compiler has to copy it. Copy the reference into a temporary object and return the temporary object instead. Okay, um, professor, at this point, what are you referring to as the object? Is it the actual class? Yeah, the actual, no, 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 not the class. It's the actual object. See? Again, coming back over here. What is the difference between int and a? One is the type, the other is the identifier. Amazing thing! Repeat the question over here again. What was the question? The question was, this is the class or the... I was asking if it's the actual object. So, class is the type and target of this is the object class is the int target of this is the a if i want to give it some example so class is the container this could be d could be c depending on what is returned we have to understand distinguish between type and an instance when i say integer a, B, C, I have one type, I have three objects. I have three, when I say container A, B, C, I have one container and three this is, this is if I can say that. <laughs> I don't know how can you make prolor for this, but three targets of this. Three targets of this, yeah. Does that make sense? So whenever you say this, you are talking about the object, not the class. Of course, you're talking about the class, but class is the type of what is being returned. Okay? So at this point, if we have container called C, when at line 26, we are returning the entire C, not just the... Yeah, but sadly, we didn't do that. We didn't return the entire C. We returned a copy of the entire C. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. That was our mistake. This demonstrated that instead of returning the C, the, to the C itself, I returned a copy of C by mistake. Okay? Are we, are we okay? All right. Just to demonstrate the difference between the two, I'm going to do one more thing in here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to overload an uh, Oh, 
Are we okay with this? Are we okay? Ah, uh, before doing that, let me let me let, let me copy this as Give me a second. So I'm going to Okay, so I added an operator plus plus that adds to data. So this is another good walkthrough. I don't need the D. What did I just do? C is returning this, correct? So plus plus is going to be applied to that, correct? When I run the program, I will see that the output will be 30. Oh? Yeah, 30. But I expect a 31. Why is it 30? This is the reason. See what is being removed? So the temporary nameless object was added by one, not this. Because by mistake in here, so what happens is that when I, when I do C plus equal 10 and it returns this, I am returning a copy of the current object. Therefore, plus plus is applied to that copy and not the, the, the C itself. If I do this, now it's got to be 31 and no copying happens. So everything is working properly. Does that make sense now, hopefully? All right. That's, that's all I wanted to say. So always, always, always return by reference unless, especially when you are doing this. Okay, when you are returning this, usually it's a reference, unless you don't want the real one to go out. And anytime you are removing a reference, imagine that you're slowing down your program because an extra memory allocation, copying, and everything is going to happen. All right, good questions came up. I'm very happy. I thought we're going to end the class and go, but uh, nice things are coming. So give me a second before the summary. Yes. This is Everybody, let's listen to the summary. Oh. <laughs> So just to um, kind of uh, summarize operator overload, mm -hmm. right? You have the, for this case, the container. Mm -hmm. It depends on um, what you want to, the operator you want to overload. Mm -hmm. For example, um, the equal to operator. Okay. You should have the assignment operator. The assignment operator. Yes. You should have the container and another container at the right hand side mm -hmm. right but the one at the right hand side should not be changed should be a constant usually no unless we ask you so it should not be changed you're absolutely right let's continue okay <laughs> uh, i'm going to show you an example that 
depends on our design. I'll, I'll give you, after two seconds, I'll explain. Continue. Okay. Then for the plus, the plus one, because both values are um, not to be changed, mm -hmm. so you have a container and... So for the plus, yeah. This for the plus sign, yes, it's a, it's, a, it's a binary operator with no side effect. So can you have two containers at, at, at both ends? Yes, you're talking about, so we are having two containers at both ends. Yeah, you're saying, can we have this? So I have a plus no, not, operator. Not, okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah right. sure, sure, well, why not? Right? Now it's, the, why didn't I make this a, a constant? It's a because it's a, because it's a primitive value, I'm passing it by, who cares if it's changed? If I don't, if I pass it by value, it's not gonna make my thinking more expensive. Uh, you know, if, if, it, if, I, if I did like this, then it had to be constant. If I'm passing by value, then why do I need to make it constant, right? Anything that is passed by value, it's a copy. Who cares? Right? So, but that is now good. I can do that. I'm passing a reference, and now I have to make it constant to make sure that I'm not going to change it by mistake. I'm not going to change the right-hand thingy. Okay? So that applies to you. So having this... Or even this one. Okay? This is a perfect example. This is a perfect thing to write. So I'm passing it by reference, making it a concept. It means I am telling to the person who's reading this that this thing is not going to change. The right side is not going to change. The left side is not going to change. No side effect on any of them. And this one the same. So how do you call the how do you call the line thirty three if you want to call Give it? Give me line number. Line thirty three. It's same thing. So you can still have two uh containers at the both side, even if you're using an int there. Yeah. Yeah. But for integers usually we don't do this because they are just primitive values and they are four bytes. It's not much I'm not saving any memory by passing a reference. It's just four bytes and passing a primitive value. So that's why I don't make it a constant. So you, okay. You okay? Don't you, make it a your, reference, yeah. Your answers are just bringing more questions. Okay. <laughs> that's good. So, so the, 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 the first question now. So I have two operator overloads for the plus sign. L right. Line number 33 and 37. 33 and 37. Mm -hmm. Am I going to call them in different ways? For example, uh, is container C plus maybe 10, or a container C plus a container D? Will it go to call those different? It doesn't make any difference. So when you do this, if I go D plus equals C now, no, plus C, sorry, D, D plus C now, something like that, and I have, So now, line number, let me just. Now, line number 37 is called at line 65. D is the current object that holds M data. Mm -hmm. C is the constant reference that is coming in. R, oh, I don't know why it has a dot over there. Let me remove it. And it's constant because it is not supposed to change it. Mm. It comes inside, it accesses the data of that one, and creates a temporary one, returns a temporary one. Now, the temporary one being the E. 
The temporary run will overwrite E using the assignment operator. So, so, the te so, but turning back to reference, will this get copied, temp? Because it's returning by value. In old times, six years ago, ten years ago, it would have, because the compilers weren't smart enough. Now the compiler is looking at you, creating a temp, says, why do I need to copy something that's just about to die? I'm just going to send that out. So when you walk through this one, something weird happens. Let me come, uh, we are doing this plus, right? So let me show you. So when I walk through this one, something weird happens. Take a look. Uh, oh, oh. You know what was something weird? The fact that I am walk throughing the wrong thing. Let me just, <laughs> just a second. Copy. Yeah, so let's do it again. So take a look at this. When I'm running it, now, all these things are happening. In old compilers, when this happened, I came over here, okay? A temp would have gotten created, and it will get created over here too, as you see, creating 60. Okay, so that is 40 plus 20, right? And what would happen was this. When you would return from here, it would actually copy this 60 and return it. And this 60 would have died. But when I, when I run it now, you will see that nothing is created. And it, nothing is created. And it comes back, passes that one to RO. So as you see, no copy is created. Why? Because the compiler is smart enough. It says, why do I copy something that is just about to die? And the scope is going to be over. I'm just going to re remove the name of temp and pass it. So RO essentially becomes a reference of that temp thing inside the, inside the function. So essentially, what the compiler is doing for you, what the compiler is doing for you is this without you knowing what compiler says why do I create the temp at all I'm just gonna make it a temporary thing and return it that's what it's doing right it's even more weird than that if I can, if I, I hope that I can demonstrate it. So in here, I'm going to say, uh, I, I didn't do it. Dun, dun, dun. That's one of the good things about having a laptop over here instead of, you know. Such a side. Let me see if it's going to come up. No, my system is dead. Wake up, wiki wiki. Something is happening. Okay, I think it's coming up. Let's wait for it. Okay, let's ha use this one as a five minutes break and we come back. When I talk, I, 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 get, I get carried away. My apologies. Yes, we can ask a question. <laughs> <laughs> it is actually recording, but I can pause it. Give me, give me a second. I was saying this when the, the power went down. I was saying I'm going to say temp is, and I'm going to put the value of temp in here and print it. Okay? Now, please, let's listen to this. Okay? So, in here, as you see, I'm creating a temp, and I'm showing it, and I'm returning it. Right? Let's walk through one more time and see what happens. So I, I am doing that. That's good. So I'm going to come over here. Now I'm getting a build error. Really? What is ambiguous?
Thank you. So now we, we go to this. So I'm actually walking through this. I'm trying to go to this operator thingy, right? So it comes in here. Please take a look at the execution sequence. Take a look at the execution sequence. First, I'm creating a container. Then I'm printing it out. Then I'm returning it, right? I'm going to press F11. F11 says next phase that is being compiled. Take a look. Oh, it actually did it this time. Where did it go? Where is your printout? Why did it jump to here and then here? Yeah, because it realizes that it realizes that if it did this and this one first, it has to create temp as a local value, then copy and return it. So essentially what it did now is actually something that you cannot code. It actually made it more efficient for you. It said, I'm going to do all the things that you have written at the time of returning. If you did this five years ago, it would have actually created a temporary one. So you had two objects getting created and dying, one temp and one copy. Now the compilers are getting smarter. They are saying, hey, if you are doing this, I'm going to do the return and print it. So now the return happens, and then it goes to your temp and prints it. And therefore, it avoids creating an extra object in here and copying it when it's supposed to go to the other one. That's what I wanted to say. Okay, so the compilers are getting more efficient now. So they are trying to make the code run faster by creating lesser objects if possible. Just be aware of that. So when you walk through it using F11, you don't say, what the heck? Why it's not executing that? Because it's trying to make, uh, optimize your code. It is actually telling you that I'm not going to uh, use this object here as a local variable. It's going to be a temporary object that's going to get printed. Are we okay? So that's that. Uh, what else? All right. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay, ignore, yeah. Okay, so when you not passing any arguments, it takes out the same character. One character, it ignores one character. One character. One character. Mm -hmm. Whichever meets first, which means, is it 2,000 characters or it's backslash and which one is first? It's going to ignore that much. So if you're... No. So what happens is that it's essentially a for loop in there. A for loop up to 2,000 and the character not being backslash n. So it goes through the loop. If it hits backslash n, it stops, which means it's before 2,000. If it reaches 2,000, it's just going to come out. Yep. <laughs> the, the, what I, the question I asked initially for the temp, just so we're clear. Oh, so yes. yeah, I could do this. It's the same. Assignment. And that was an amazing question he asked. You're, not, you're gonna get marks on this in your midterm. Assignment at the moment of creation. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna give you this, and I'm gonna intentionally overload the assignment operator too, and see if you're gonna pick that by mistake. I'm gonna give you this, and I'm gonna give you the container. I'm gonna put over there a, 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 a constructor that accepts one argument, and an assignment operator that accepts an integer to see if, by mistake, you're going to pick up the, the assignment. Assignment at the moment of creation is initialization. It is not an operator. Essentially, as I was mentioning in here, if I have over here integer a, I can write integer a 30. It's the same thing as writing integer a is equal to 30. That's 
valid C++ code. You don't need to put assignment. Assignment at the moment of creation is invoking one argument constructor. I hope that I put enough stress on it. Questions? Yes. No, you can't have, you cannot pass two arguments to, a, to an assignment. <laughs> Doesn't make sense. One argument only, if that's the question. Was that the question? Like, you also add like a container with like an integer. You validate like, add the integer. It's not going to work. It's like, uh, using, uh, using the new class. Can you, can you dictate it so I write it so I understand what you're saying? I, I use close to the, um, that temp. So I won't be able to do like, um, like create another temp and do like, uh, like, Temp2 plus, um, plus M data, something like that. Temp2, and then do what? Plus M data. Plus? There is no yes. plus. You're creating temp. You cannot do plus. You're creating. It's part. You can. <laughs> I know what you're saying. You cannot say container, container uh, A plus B. That, <laughs> that doesn't mean. M data with another container instance, like another instance of. So I mean, you mean right over here plus a? No, replace, replace R with R with dot M data mm -hmm. with like an instance of a container. Oh yeah, with an instance of container, something like uh, a over here. So, yes. Of course you can. You can. Yes. So in here, if I have container a, I write something like this. What's going to happen? No, no, it's not an error. This is perfectly OK, actually. I don't know why it's giving you that. So no, no commission. Well, we'll see. But I'll tell you why. Because you didn't overload the plus operator that accepts an integer at left and an A at right. When you put a plus operator over here, again, remember, at right side of, like if I had parentheses, this essentially means this one. Again, assignment at the moment of creation is initialization. Do you have a definition of a plus operator that accepts an integer at left, left and a container at right? Do we have such a thing? Integer at left, container at right? No. But if I had it, if I had over here integer operator, integer value, value, and, con and const container, reference right-hand operator. If I had this, then you wouldn't get an error in here. It would be perfectly OK in both cases. Again, it does not matter. These two are identical. It's potatoes, potatoes. So this one is potato. This one is potato. OK, same thing. Um, it, it will call the constructor, the default it constructor. It will not call the constructor. First, it will call the, the plus operator to resolve this. Okay. So first, plus will be called, however we design it. I don't know how we're going to design it. How to design this? But that's the essence of IPC144, you're asking me, what happens if I say A is equal to B plus C? I will say first, B has to get plused by C, then we'll put it in A, right? That's the essence of any programming language. First you calculate, then the result goes back. It's not, it has nothing to do with constructors. That's C language. In C language, when you have an operation, First, the result of the operation must be apparent, and then after that, the action will be taken. So in here, you just mentioned that I want, where is that temp thingy that, yeah, you just mentioned, I don't know how that plus, like this plus operator is completely screwed up. <laughs> this doesn't make sense, but what I'm saying, you are saying the action of construction depends on resolving this operation. So the operation must happen, the result extracted, then the one argument constructor will be called. And that's in any 
language. It has it, it, it that's a C thing. It has not it not a C thing. It's a programming language thing. It has nothing to do with constructors or default constructors or something. Can I wipe that out? Because that's not going to make anything. Okay. You mean plus B, you mean? If you have a container B over here, of course you can. What do I do? Com container temp equals A plus B. Okay. It works perfectly. So, again, close your eyes, forget what is here. What do you see over there? Is A plus B, uh, is, is A plus B something possible? Yes, we overloaded it. So, so what ha the, in here, the walkthrough is this. First, A plus B is going to happen. The result is going to be a temporary nameless container, correct? So you're going to have a one argument constructor receiving a container, which means the copy constructor will be called. It's still a one argument constructor. No. Containers. Okay. And inside your definition or inside your declaration, whatever it is, you are actually adding the two containers. No, it's not the two. See, again. Yeah, you are saying <laughs> let me put it this way. For this logic, this is nuts. For this logic, this is cuckoo. Nobody does that. Creating two unrelated containers and get the somewhat and the copy and then it has nothing to do with plus. So for this logic, it's so the logic is completely screwed up. The syntax, perfectly good. It executes, runs, and gives you garbage. It's like, can I put an ice cream in my eye? Yes, you can. It doesn't accomplish anything. You can. Try it. Can I pour that coffee on my head? Yes, you can. Will I get a syntax error? No. Coffee can be coffee can be poured on your head. It can, but it doesn't take you anywhere. This is what I'm saying. Is the syntax legit? Yes. I have a container created. At two sides, I have two containers. The result of the plus is a temporary nameless. Therefore, I'm going to have a temp created out of a container. Therefore, copy constructor is called. I'm good. Does it make sense? No. It's absolute garbage. Syntax, beautiful. Again, this is something, it's IPC 144 day one. Computer is dumb as a doorknob. Computer is like a person, I'm sorry to mention this, it's like you're hiring somebody that's absolute dumb, doesn't understand anything. It takes you five months to teach the guy how to wipe the table. But the guy is so fast, he can wipe 9,000 tables in a minute. Is it worth it to teach that guy for five months how to wipe a table? Yes. Because when it learns it, it does it fast. That's what computers are. You write garbage, it does garbage. But it does it, as long as the syntax is correct. Do I make sense, or I'm talking cuckoo? OK, I'm going to take this nonsense out, because if anybody sees that online, they're going to tell me he's crazy. OK? so. So it was M data and plus what was it? R O M data. So I remove the potato, I remove the potato, and I will remove the temp. Actually, I'll comment the temp. Are we good? Wow, it's 53. Bye. Let's go. The other prof is gonna come in and I got carried away. I don't know if that if that nobody shows up then I'll be very embarrassed. <laughs>